Hello, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us today. We continue our ICAP webinar series, so we are glad to have you here. I know it's over testing time, so thank you for taking the time just to sit in on this. Um, as Gary mentioned earlier, we will have the chat box open, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. We will have some times for some Q&As, and we will get to those questions as soon as possible. Also, we have a guest speaker today, which we love to call our voice from the field. And I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Chelsea Hunt. I am the Career Pathway Strategy Lead for the New Skills for Youth grant. So our guest from the field today, our, our voice from it, is Dr. Mary Waters. And she is really here just to tell you about the purpose and resilience when it comes to ICAP, to tell us data story, and also talk about how ICAP really relates to that comprehensive school counseling. So I'm going to go ahead and let her come up here and speak to you, and then I'll come back again for Q&As. And also, I forgot to mention that this webinar will be recorded, so you are able to see it later on, and I will send it out to you as well. Thank you, Chelsea. It's such a pleasure and a privilege really to be here talking to people who will actually be implementing the ICAP. Um, we, uh, I was part of the team that developed the toolkit, and we had so much fun doing that work. Uh, it was very purposeful work, and I'm going to be talking about purpose. And we really enjoyed each other, and we enjoyed finding the resources that are the toolkit. And I will refer to that toolkit throughout um, this presentation. I would like to start out, I'm a former English teacher, uh, I also was a school counselor for about 15 years at, at the elementary, the middle, and the high school levels, and I was also the coordinator of school counselors in Tulsa Public Schools for two years. Now I teach school counselors, so I've done just about every job there is in the book for, in terms of school counseling. But at the heart, I'm an English teacher, and I kind of say to people, I think, it was before we had school counselors, we had English teachers, right? Because it was English teachers that could build that self-awareness in students. So I'm going to start with a snippet of a poem from Mary Oliver, who passed away this year. She passed away in February. And I just, I love the whole poem, Summer Day, but these two lines are so appropriate to what we're talking about. Tell me, what is your, your plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And so those of you that are watching, you are given this very, very sacred responsibility to help our young people try to figure out not only what they want to do with their life, but who they want to be. So let's begin with two, I hope, um, pretty compelling questions. What would happen to schools if the most desired outcome of education were purposeful, purposeful lives among students? And what needs to happen in your building to make that happen? And I am sure across this wonderful state there are many people that are involved in this and doing fabulous things. And I just hope that ICAP puts a bow on all the things that you're doing um, to celebrate what needs to happen to have our, our kids have purposeful lives at the end of the rainbow. I really believe those of you that are entrusted with leading the ICAP initiatives in your schools it all starts with you, right? So when we talk about social-emotional learning, if we leave teachers out of social-emotional learning, we're making a big mistake. It starts with the adults in the building. So I would love for you all to take a minute to reflect on three things that matter most to you. And they may have nothing to do with your job. It may be your faith. It may be your family. It may be your community. And that's okay. The three things that matter most, the reasons they matter, and how long do you think those things are going to matter to you? I really feel this reflective part is absolutely necessary for those of you that are going to be leading this initiative with kids. Because if we can reignite our why, we're going to implement this ICAP in a much more intentional way. So um, it, just a little bit of a definition about purpose. It's a goal that has meaning beyond the self. That's in the literature, and that's kind of the meaning that I like. But I, I do believe it can be broader than that. Um, for the kid that wants to go out and make a lot of money and then become a philanthropist, I have no issue with that. Um, but, but I think purpose 
the why for, for, for students is very, very important. I just love this. This is from the Humans of New York. And just look at that, that child and look at what his purpose is. I want to be a mailman so that I can let people know when it's their birthday. What a lovely purpose, right? And I, I have to think that, that that child may not always want to be a mailman, but it, somehow he's o always going to want to connect to working with people and, and seeing their joy. I feel we're in a unique position, all of us in schools, not just people leading the, the ICAP initiative, but all of us have a, a wonderful role in helping kids figure out what they're good at, right? I find that oftentimes our biggest talents are known to us, but we don't celebrate them in us. We just kind of take it for granted what we're good at. Um, so I think those conversations with kids to let them know the kid who is winning all the debate medals, he may take that for granted that he can put a cogent argument together. I think it's so important for us as teachers, as, as counselors, as administrators, to be really intentional about the conversations with students about what they're good at. And then there are times when it's truly unknown what students are good at. I can think of so many students that when I would say, you light up a room, or you're really good at leading people, or you have such passion around math, they, they really didn't know that about themselves. So I think that really is at the heart of the ICAP, is to have those really important conversations with, kid, with students about what they're, what they're good at and helping them to find that. Beyond the inventories, the inventories are great, um, but beyond the inventory, that personal connection that we can have with students to let them know what they're great at. So uh, we have been having a really important conversation in this state about trauma. And I really want to give a shout out to uh, Kristen Ashley and her team that has that has that have really put that in the mo uppermost minds of people. But I also want to say that the work we're doing with ICAP is not divorced from the trauma work. And what I found in the literature is that higher levels of purpose in life is associated with resilience. And Purpose develops in response to one's life circumstances and adverse circumstances can provide the spark that ignites purpose. And this purpose may sound like a highfalutin idea that it just applies to maybe upper middle class white kids. No. <laughs> the literature clearly says that kids of color and kids that have grown up in adverse circumstances have higher purpose scores than white middle class and upper middle class kids. So um, I, I, I cited that study. So um, it's really important for all our kids to have that purpose conversation. It's not a highfalutin conversation. It's an essential conversation. I'm going to talk next about um, the, the law, the House Bill 2155. Um, we are at the nexus of, the student is at the nexus of the school, the, the partners, and our families. So we're all working in concert together. I would venture to say that already your school is doing something that would qualify with being ICAP compliant. So I would love for you to reframe this as not just as another mandate, but an opportunity for us to do things in a comprehensive way with, with our school entity, with our partners in education and our families. And I know that I may be talking to people in, in rural Oklahoma that may not have a slew of partners, but everybody has a church in their community. Everybody has a store in their community. So we can build partnerships that are strong in whatever part of Oklahoma we happen to reside. So I know that this, this purpose idea may sound a little abstract, a little mysterious, but it's really our job in schools to take that purpose and to translate it into goals, motivation, and activities. We know many of our students are not engaged, perhaps, with the academic matter in their schools. But we can use this ICAP process is to, helping, to help ignite that motivation and develop those activities and motivations into goals. So that's my hope for all of you and for our students. So I talked a little bit about trauma and the way that purpose can be used as a healing agent to help those kids in, in trauma. 
here's here's a student I met probably now going on 10 years ago when I was a high school counselor at Webster High School. Jose, I didn't even know a lot of Jose's trauma history. He was careful to not talk about it for reasons that are were important to him, but I do know that I did know that he was homeless. And I knew that he was asked to leave his home because he came out to his father as being gay. Jose um, went to work, had a full-time job while he managed school full-time. And um, he credits me with helping him, and I wish I could take that credit. I just think of all the things I should have done for Jose and for the many other children in that school. And I wish we had an ICAT process because I think I would have had uh, the motivation and the tools to help more students. But Jose was deeply, uh, deeply affected by trauma, although he had that sunny smile on every day of his life. What we, what we tried to do for Jose is connect his purpose to his resiliency. For one thing, we were able to help him with an application to uh, sit on the mayor's youth council that was in operation at the time in Tulsa. He'd come to me and he, he said, Ms. Waters, all I want to do in life is help people and make a difference. That was his purpose. And so we were able to connect him with lots of things. But the thing that I really remember was the mayor's youth council. He wasn't particularly interested in government. So when you think about a mayor's youth council, you think of the, the kids in AP government or the kids that are following politics and on Twitter. I don't know that we had Twitter so much back then. But Jose was, didn't present that way. He presented as wanting to make a difference. And this opportunity came across my desk. I knew that Nick Doctor was heading up that uh, group. And Nick Doctor was somebody in the community that I sensed would connect with Jose on a deep level. And indeed, my hunches about that were right. Today, Jose is the program manager at the Equality Center. He sits on the Hispanic Affairs Commission in the city of Tulsa. He sits at, on the high school beyond configuration team to reimagine high school at Webster High School, his alma mater. He has reignited and reformed the Mayor's Youth Council in, in the city of Tulsa. And as he says, it's not just a bunch of kids from magnet schools and private schools, Jose's words, not mine, um, <laughs> um, and not kids that all have Macintosh computers, <clears throat> so, which are the things that made Jose feel so um, out of it. But Jose is a, is a student with purpose and, and somebody for whom we ignited that purpose and connected him, and he is making a huge difference in our greater uh, Tulsa community. I just wish that I could have helped more students. I believe the ICAP law and toolkit gives us the mechanisms to do that. You all have your own Jose's too, so I want you to think about your Jose's. I'm having trouble with Oh, there we go. Sorry. Little technical glitch. Okay. Um, now I'm going to put my school counselor educator hat on. So ICAPs are really totally integral to having a comprehensive systematic approach to career development. It's not an anecdotal story or a random event. I'm afraid that my story with Jose was too much of a random event, an anecdotal story, and not a systematic change that we made at Webster High School. You all have, that's what's exciting about this initiative, you all have that opportunity now. All right, so this is again my school counselor educator hat. This, so having a comprehensive school counseling program, it's not optional, it's an ethical imperative. This is from our Code of Ethics. You all can read. And I realize there are some uh, administrators on this webinar today. So if you are in the capacity of supervising school counselors, this is part of their ethical mandate as school counselors. Comprehensive school counseling that ensures equitable academic, career, and social emotional development. So here's where we look at equity. Are all students in your building no matter their zip code, no matter their color, no matter their socioeconomic status, 
are, do they have the same opportunities as other students? So this isn't just an ethical imperative, it's a moral one. So again, I feel it's difficult to divorce career development from academic and social emotional development. These are our domains in the school counseling world, but they overlap. So the story of Jose is illustrative of how having, giving kids purpose, giving kids a career plan is at the nexus point of social emotional and academic development. So it's difficult to isolate these domains. So again, our ethical imperative is to use data to determine where we need the interventions. I'm going to present a data story both nationally and at a state level. That's what I'm going to use the rest of my presentation to do because data actually is our friend and data tell a story. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a story that I think is an important one and um, it's not just about being great with Excel spreadsheets and it's not the ANOVA and the multiple regression you learned in graduate school. It's really not. It's, it's about collecting data that makes sense. So let's look at our data story that our nation and our state is telling us. I'm going to start with our national data and then I'll move into Oklahoma's data. So this is from 2016. This comes from the National Center for Educational Statistics and it shows which countries are in the lead. And I, I'm not sure how well you can see this. It's a, it's a screenshot from um, the website of the uh, National Center for Educational Statistics. But it shows us the United States as being ninth in terms of having post-secondary plans for our students. Uh, at one point, the United States led the world in the number of college graduates that we minted. We are now 12th. Uh, that was the imperative for former President Obama and Michelle Obama to get involved with the Reach Higher Initiative and in particular tap school counselors as people who are underutilized in helping kids access college uh, degrees. But here we're talking of course post-secondary attainment and um, this, I don't think this is a statistic to be proud about. We've, we're, it's not that we've lost ground when you, when, you, when you look into the data, it's not that we've lost ground. We're minting the same number of post-secondary attainment and college degrees. It's other countries have surpassed us. This is data from our own state, and uh, it shows that uh, in 2014, 40% of our students had post-secondary attainment. 70% 70, 70 is what we're going to need in 2025. After I put this presentation together, I actually found something from Superintendent Hoffmeister that the, the number by 2025 is actually 77%. So we've got some work to do. We're up to it. We can, th that's why this ICAP initiative is so important for our state. So here's another um, screenshot from the, this time from the Educational Trust. We are 37th in the nation in terms of students enrolling in college. That's just enrolling in college, not completing. I don't think we want to be 37th in the country enrolling students in college. Okay, so what do we have to do to raise this rate? I posit today, this, this comes really from the ACT uh, research, to have more college attainment, more post-secondary plans. Students need financial knowledge because college is expensive. So the very practical nuts and bolts intricacies of the financial maze, and it's not an easy one for students to navigate especially our students who are first-generation college students. Uh, but there is a maze to be conquered, and we school counselors are uniquely positioned to help students with that. Their academic preparation is, of course, important. Uh, concurrent enrollment, AP classes, or just plain old good education in the classroom. Very important for our students. I'm going to gripe a little bit at this point as somebody who teaches undergraduates. I'd love for there to be an emphasis on writing. Um, students, 
student writing can be improved, and I work really hard at that, but um, the writing is a, an area of weakness, and uh, that's not just me saying that, that's all my colleagues. Social and emotional skills is also part of college attainment. Do kids have the self-regulation, the self-awareness, the relationship skills, the decision-making skills that one needs to navigate college? Very interesting piece of research I came up across was students in their first six weeks, those students especially that go away to school, students in the first six weeks, if they don't make connections to a friend group, an organization, they are likely, more likely to drop out. They're the kids that are sitting in their dorm rooms on social media, not going to class, not engaging. So um, we, at the high school level, the middle school level, I think we need to address those social and emotional skills as importantly as the financial knowledge and the academic preparation. Those rectangles are of even size for a reason because they're equally important. All right, financial. This is kind. This is my. I admit. This is my. Um, this is where I would love to see us improve. So right now, the most recent statistic is that we rank 45th in the nation in terms of the percentage of kids that are completing FAFSA. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. Every year, two billion dollars sit unused, reported by the Department of Education of students who would be eligible for Pell Grants that don't apply. FAFSA is the first step. I know that Pell Grants have lost the power that they had years ago, uh, that Pell Grant is not enough to pay for college, but a student who gets a Pell Grant and who gets Oklahoma's Promise is in pretty good shape to go to college in Oklahoma. The FAFSA also is the gateway for students to apply to schools, private schools that have big endowments, frankly. There are schools that are private with a sticker price that's totally obnoxious that might cost less than OSU or OU because they meet full EFC, expected family contribution. So we must get better at our students filling out the FAFSA. I know as a school counselor, I did not feel qualified to to really roll up my sleeves and help students with FAFSA. But there were tons of people who came into the school to help me. Uh, and I know working for Northeastern State University, our financial aid people would only be too happy to come and host a FAFSA night. I also wonder about putting the FAFSA completion as part of the financial, financial literacy standards that the students have to, the course they have to complete. Why not teach them how to fill out a FAFSA there? I just want to go to the data. Um, if you go to the data here, um, you'll see which states are doing really well. Louisiana last year had 75% of their students complete the FAFSA. And when I dug into why that was, the answer that I got was they made it a graduation, repo uh, graduation repo requirement. The same thing for uh, Illinois. Illinois makes FAFSA completion part of the graduation requirements. So um, those are just some ideas of what states that are really killing it, really crushing it with the FAFSA um, are doing. Now I have to go back to the... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So you, you, if this PowerPoint will be uh, put up on a server and you could actually dig into what I'm talking about. But I think as of March 21st, Illinois was the state that was in the lead um, and Louisiana was, was coming up strong behind. So if, if Illinois and Louisiana can do it, why can't we? Why can't we? So I've really... Um, looked at the data story, our international data. We've gone from being first in the country in terms of college degree attainment to 12th. Uh, in our own state, 40% has a post-secondary certificate. This is the data we want to move with the ICAP impl implementation. So here are just some recommendations I have for all of you in your schools to where to start in terms of looking at the data. And you all can read so I'm not going to read these questions, but um, th this is a really wonderful starting point. 
find out what your school's data story is. Track FAFSA completion. It's so easy. You just go to the FAFSA tracker. Track Oklahoma Promise. Start talking to students about Oklahoma Promise in the seventh grade. In fact, the toolkit has letters that go home to parents and actually begins talking about Oklahoma Promise as early as sixth grade. So that's how this ICAP toolkit can help you change the data story in your schools. SEL, you know, it's my belief that every school in the at the elementary level should have core curriculum for social emotional learning. There are so many good evidence-based curriculums out there. I don't, I don't get paid or get kickbacks from any one of them. So, um, but Second Step is widely used in the state. Uh, Too Good for Drugs is another one. Uh, there, there are many, many really very good core curriculums uh, that are out there. School counselors are expected to teach core curriculum in the classroom. So um, administrators, if you're listening, we need to provide school counselors with curriculum. I dislike watching school counselors go to Pinterest um, to, 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 to find curriculum. I dislike them going to teacher pay teacher to find curriculum. Our profession has developed enough where we have evidence-based curriculum. You don't go to the doctor and have the doctor go to Pinterest to diagnose you. So we have evidence-based interventions now uh, as professionals that we should be using in the classroom. So um, in terms of next year, in terms of implementation, my, my counsel here is come up with a one goal. Um, don't be, if you create one smart goal for your school that's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound, and you can see some progress, that's going to inspire you the next year to have two goals and the next year to have three goals. But look at your data story. Find out where, what needs to happen and come up with a SMART goal. I've written some SMART goals here. For those of you that are thinking about really implementing that comprehensive school counseling program a la RAMP, the Recognized American School Counseling Program, this would all be considered perception data that leads to outcomes, the outcome being students having post-secondary plans. So that may be a little bit of inside baseball for some of you, but I know there are school counselors out there determined to get that ramp. We have two ramp programs in the state right now, one in Shawnee, Will Rogers. Um, Rebecca Berry has had a ramp program in her, in her elementary school since ramp became a designation. And we're very proud of Sarah Kirk's um, ramp program that she got awarded with this year, uh, as well as being an ASCA finalist, uh, national finalist for school counseling. So we have excellent school counseling going on in the state. Okay, this just is, again, a little bit of inside baseball for school counselors who are really following the ASCA model. Uh, these are the components of the, of, the, of the ASCA model, comprehensive school counseling programs. And I really feel that to have one goal within the career domain is very doable next year. The toolkit offers core curriculum. We have in, in the toolkit a scope and sequence for curriculum regarding careers from sixth grade through 12th grade. So if you're thinking again of that ramp designation, you have the career part all outlined, all outlined for you in the toolkit, and that's exciting. This comes from Trish Hatch's work, uh, the great Trish Hatch. Um, she she's a big believer in PBIS and MTSS, multi-tiered systems of support, and she devised this uh, visual to include career. Usually PBIS has an academic and a social emotional piece. Trish added the career piece. So I, I thought that was appropriate. For those of you that have PBIS, this is a way to incorporate the ICAP work. So again, I'm just promoting what I would love to see happen in our state, which is more FAFSA completion. So goal one, you can, your goal will be based on your own data story. 
but you create a goal. So um, to me, FAFSA completion in this state would be really low-hanging fruit because um, we lag. And so uh, maybe your goal is to increase FAFSA completion by 10%, which would be amazing for students. Uh, you're going to monitor that goal at the end of the year, and you're going to customize it going forward to the following year. You're going to look at what works. Maybe having parent nights in your, in your particular school is, doesn't work. Maybe you need to um, do something after the football game about FAFSA. I, I, I don't know. You, you, will, you will know what to do for your own particular school. So I come back to this, the idea of purpose being abstract and kind of nebulous. And I hope today I've given you some ideas about how to translate that big idea of purpose into some goals and activities for your students to move, the, to, to move us forward. And you don't have to do this work alone. If there are school counselors watching this webinar, my message to you is you really don't have to do this work alone. Uh, you don't have to know everything. You, you, as school counselors, we are incredibly resourceful. We're really good at building teams. We're really good at reaching out for what we don't know. We're good at case management. And frankly, case management is an evidence-based strategy. So um, this is, it, your success doesn't just in, impinge on you, but the team that you can build. Okay. I want you to think, I want to end this really with thinking about your why, right? How this ICAP toolkit, how this ICAP law can really help your students attain those post-secondary plans with elegance and not with random acts of guidance, but with intentionality. And I would like to end, I started with a Mary Oliver um, quote, and I'd just like to end with a Mary Oliver quote. When it's over, I want to say, all my life I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. When it is over, I don't want to wonder if I made if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened or full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. So thank you for being with us today. And um, if there are any questions, we'll take those. And um, Ms. Chelsea Hunt is going to finish us up with some final thoughts. Thank you so much, Dr. Waters. Um, again, that's really what these webinars are all about, is just to bring in perspective from our voices from the field so that you can get their expertise and their um, mindset as they are the ones out in the field. And it's always good. So I hope that these ICAP webinars have been beneficial for you. And continue to stay with us because I will highlight our next webinar also. Uh, but one thing I wanted to show as I was listening to Dr. Waters as she was speaking, um, I wanted to let you all know about College App Week. That is actually September 23rd through the 27th of 2019. And College App Week is, is an annual nation, nationwide excuse me, event. It's an opportunity for high school seniors, especially those who have never considered college or who will be first in their families to attend college, so our first generational students, uh, to receive the hands-on assistance for knowledge um, volunteers while completing their college application. So again, College App Week is going to be September 23rd through the 27th. And if you need a contact, I know the website is the the main website is okcollegeappweek.org, and I will send this also in a follow-up email. But your contact at the Oklahoma College Assistant Program is Lethal, Lethal Huddleston, and her email is lhuddleston at ocap.org, and that's l-h-u-d-d-l-e-s-t-o-n, excuse me, at ocap.org. But also in my follow-up email, I will get you that contact information. Again, I always like to mention our new ICAP resources. They came out last month. Um, hopefully you are taking a look at them. Um, our first one is okedge.com, really a website just 
preparing our Oklahoma students for life beyond high school. A very good resource for you, so I hope you're checking it out. It's for our students, our parents, our educators, and our business and community members. Uh, you heard today Dr. Waters mention a lot about the ICAP toolkit. As, as mentioned, she was a part of the counselor cadre who created this toolkit, so it is a good resource and it's there to help you strengthen your ICAP implementation, so please check that out. You can also find that on okedge.com. And then our last resource is OSDE Connect, and that is an online learning community designed to help encourage those networking between, of course, students, business, community, and educators, and families. So you can also link to that. That's also linked to on OK Edge also. We try to make it very easy for you to find these resources. Uh, so please check those out. If you need access to them, let, send me an email. Let me know. I'll have my contact information so that you can get connected. Our next webinar, it is going, so mark your calendars. Again, it's every third Thursday of the month. So our next webinar is Thursday, May 16th. And Teresa Shackley at the Oklahoma College Assistant Program, she is the OK College Start Coordinator, and she will be here to really just share with you some details on OK College Start and the Professional Center, what features they have. Also talk about how you can implement this tool within your school districts how to create accounts, what type of reports districts can pull for their and retrieve for each to utilize as you're going in that monitoring process, how to use the electronic transcript exchange system, and so much more. So please come back and join us on Thursday, May 16th uh, with Teresa Shackley. Of course, we always want you to stay connected. Uh, today, hopefully, you received our ICAP newsletter. If not, please sign up for it today. Uh, we had some good resources that came out. One that I want to highlight because it's actually happening tonight is our Education Matters series, and that is with State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister, who really is bringing awareness in the areas of college and career readiness, in the areas of trauma, in the areas of um, RSA, a plethora of things, just what is going good in our state. So it comes on tonight on OETA at 7 o'clock p.m. And what's interesting is that these Education Matter occurs every third Thursday of the month as well. So every time we have an ICAP webinar, I will promote that also so that you can watch it and get stay connected in that aspect. And then also please stay connected with our Twitter and our Facebook. Some good things are happening, and that's how we keep you plugged in also. I just wanted to always leave it with our student support team. If you ever need to contact any one of us, there's our email to get a hold of us. And then um, the following slides are just some common definitions, so I won't go through that, but I do want to open it up now for any questions that you may have for myself or Dr. Waters while we're in the room. Are there any questions? And if you have questions, don't forget to type it into the chat box. Okay, as there are no questions at this time, I want to go ahead and thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you again for Dr. Waters for being here and providing her expertise in relation to school counseling and ICAP and purpose. It really is about our purpose for our students and making sure that they're connected with their interests, skills, and abilities um, so that they truly can be successful um, citizens of society. So thank you again for coming. Don't forget to tune in for our next ICAP webinar and have a great rest of your afternoon.